We're on a wild dog hunt. Our first task was to build a camp, and in a few days this functional film base took shape in the heart of the African bush. This was to be home for the next 18 months with most of the facilities we'd need. We were ready to begin our early morning routine. We're driving here along the, the track that marks the boundary to the Moremi National Park. This is one of the few major roads in the area. Most of the time we're off-road in the bush. Uh, there are very few roads like this anywhere around. It's 5.30 in the morning and we've been out for about an hour and a half looking for the dogs. Wild dogs move early and our first task of the day was to find them. Two of the dogs in this pack have got uh, radio collars which we can pick up on the telemetry. It's got to be pretty quick because when they start off on a hunt they can disappear in about two minutes. Yeah, I've got a fairly strong signal across at 3 o'clock, mate. OK, let's go. Once the dogs were moving, we had to catch up fast. It's at about 11 o'clock. OK. OK, got the dogs at uh, 9 o'clock. Dead ahead. We knew this pack in the area pretty well, and often we could second guess their routes and catch up with them. One of the things we've tried to do with this film is to shoot the dogs from low angles, so that everything's from their point of view. So we've developed this hydraulic lift so we can get right down and film the dogs from their eye level. We filmed this pack often over the last five years, and the dogs have learned to trust us completely. But I was always amazed how relaxed they were while we were filming. After a day's filming, almost every evening was taken up with routine repairs. This zoom control doesn't want to work, and so I'm trying to find out why not. And if I have to send it back overseas, it's going to take six weeks to fix, and I need it tomorrow. This is yet another puncture, and this now brings the total tally in the last three weeks to about 65, believe it or not. And that's a big movie tag. <laughs> I'll take a guess that we're looking at around about three or four punctures per day. Ah, here it is. This is the problem. There's a beetle in the electronics. Working in a remote area like this means being totally self-sufficient and it wasn't long before everyone could fix almost anything. Maybe 20 centimetres. Not your average thorn. November, the annual rains were upon us, and keeping equipment dry became a priority. Believe it or not, this camp is in the middle of the Kalahari Desert, but when it rains, it does so with a vengeance. Well, you can probably see outside the window here, there's a massive thunderstorm going on. We're just uh, looking for a signal and seeing if we can find the, the dogs. Torrential rain wasn't going to stop us, and the daily search for the dogs continued. 
Okay, dogs on the right. Just to prove that it's always worth going out, however foul the weather, the skies cleared that afternoon, and we managed to film some great scenes of the dogs playing in the rain pools. A cup of strong coffee was still the first order of every morning, but we were soon out trailing the pack. Within days of the rain, the grass was head high, and finding the dogs was hard enough. Following them became a punishing experience. Major vehicle repairs were a daily frustration and meant lost filming time. This piece here is supposed to be attached to this piece here. And the two have broken in half, which is why this wheel is now doing this. Meanwhile, the dogs are trotting away at 15 kilometers an hour. They have no chance at all of catching up with this money. And we're about 100 miles from the nearest welding machine. And uh, we need this bit for steering. As our camera car took a beating, our ingenuity was tested to the limit and camp became a regular workshop for broken car parts. Perfect. Keeping up with the high-speed dogs, everything took a beating. I think it's boiling. What do you think? It's boiling. It's boiling. It's boiling. Meanwhile, the wild dogs have gone over the horizon. We stopped off at a waterhole. Just put water straight out of the waterhole, straight into the radiator. The mud sealed the hole. I like it. Without our tracking device, it would be much more difficult to find them. After days of searching, we're back with a pack. But after a quick count, we realize they're not all there. Rave, our hero dog, is nowhere to be seen. I'm tracking on foot this morning, trying to find our hero dog who's been missing for two weeks. We haven't seen him, which is pretty worrying for the film. But I picked up tracks of two dogs this morning, so I'm trying to follow them on foot and see if we can if we can find them. Yeah, the tracks go right through here. They can't be far away now. There he is, there he is. He's lying in the grass there. Yeah, it's him. Hey, Rave, I'm very happy to see you. Four hours of tracking, and two weeks later we finally found him. Finding Rave was a highlight after weeks of frustration, and only days later we were in for another treat, a new litter of pups born to the pack. And the team are back at the same time next week here on BBC Two. Next tonight, Big Cat Diary.